If you've made it this far, hopefully you've either got a prototype or some sketches of your idea. Now you need to actually test it. If you remember from the first video, I mentioned that there's a few parts to testing. First, actually making sure your prototype works in a technical sense and does what it's supposed to. You might have even been doing this as you were building to make sure things work. For my pom-pom booby trap, that means making sure the code works, the motors turn when they're supposed to, and the sensor knows when someone touches the chocolate. Most of the time, the prototype won't work the way you want it to the first time around, but part of testing is figuring out why it doesn't so you can improve it. For this first activity, if you haven't already, test how your prototype works. Use your design notebook to take notes on things that don't work or could be improved on, like the motor doesn't turn all the way or the sensor isn't detecting when I touch it. If you think you know why something isn't working, write that down too, like I think I need to use a different code block. If it's a paper prototype, you may not be able to test it in quite the same way, but you can still do research on the parts you're less sure about or try coding it with a microbit simulator on the MakeCode website. The second part of testing is making sure the user wants to use the solution you've designed. This is where I'll do another round of user research, but this time I'll actually have the user test the prototype or show them my paper prototypes. Then I'll do an interview or a survey to get their thoughts. Hi, Schmasman. Great to see you again. Hi, Jasmine. You too. So, um, what did you think of the prototype I built? Ah, uh, it's pretty cool. Okay, thanks. What specifically did you like about it? Um, I like that it's automatic and that the booby trap goes off as soon as anyone touches the chocolate. Thanks. What don't you like about it or think could be better? Hmm, well... I don't like that I have to clean up all the pom-poms after. Also right now, there's no way for it to know if the person taking the chocolate is an intruder or if it's just me, and I don't want to get pom-pommed. Uh, maybe you could add a password or something? Great idea, thanks. Um, do you think you would use this at home? Well, to be honest, I think until you fix the issue that it doesn't recognize the real owner of the chocolate, I probably wouldn't. Thanks, that's really helpful. Your turn. Show your prototype to someone else and get feedback from them on what they like, what they don't like, or think can be improved. If you're using a paper prototype, show the user the idea you've sketched out. Either way, make sure to ask open-ended questions, not leading questions. Leading questions are ones where you're trying to force an answer, or only giving the option to say yes or no, like, don't you think this would be better if I use slime instead of pom-poms? The last thing you want to test is if your solution actually solves the problem you defined. In this case, does the pom-pom booby trap actually stop an intruder from stealing the user's chocolate? Turns out, while the booby trap worked, the pom-poms don't actually stop anyone from taking the chocolate, so they don't solve the problem I defined, which is definitely a bad thing. For this last activity, go back to wherever you wrote your problem definition in your design notebook. Do you think your solution solves the problem? If it does, great. If not, write down why you think it doesn't. This is why it's important to define your problem. Otherwise, you can lose sight of why you're even making the project in the first place. After testing, it's clear that my prototype could still be improved. In the next video, we'll talk about the last step in the design process, iteration.